Hi everyone who's joining us now. Five minutes left. We are doing a mic check. One, two, one, two. Hi, Noma. I see she's waving at me. And um, to everyone who's joined us, hi, Naledi. Naledi um, records our sessions and uploads it on YouTube. So you guys can find all the episodes of Farm Spaces on YouTube. I'll share the link after the episode. So, yeah, I'm really excited to, to be here with our speakers in aquaponics. Aquaponics is not so popular in South Africa, much about Africa. We'll hear from David. So is it popular that site in um, Zimbabwe? Um, so I would want to say that, yes, uh, it's taking some traction in terms of people who are trying to get into aquaponics, but the norm has been just fish farming. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is, I mean, the, if you want to be a farmer, I think you don't aspire to be a hydroponics farmer or a high, a, aquaponics farmer. You, you think about the soil, you know. So it's, it's gaining traction, and I really, I'm excited to hear what our speakers have to say. Neil, what do you have to say as uh, the chairperson of ASA? Is it gaining traction? Are we on the right track? Yeah, I think it's gaining. I think you can see from the from the um, amount of members, and 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 not only that, I mean, my aquaponics, as as I said earlier, or we had, we had a quick discussion, um, that they sell a lot of the products, mm. which which um, um, I don't know what their revenue is like, but um, even I buy from them, and that that shows that things are things are moving up. In South Africa, we have a few um, legality challenges. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as far as permitting of fish and all of those things go. But I think as a aquaponics, and I, I tweeted a thing earlier, is that you can do so much more plants per hectare. Now, you don't have to take a hectare as an example, but that is unfortunately the one. So, yeah, I mean, our, our, um, our membership is increasing from the hobbyist, which I started 10 years ago, September 10 years mm -hmm. ago, to where we are now, I mean, this has changed dramatically, wow. dramatically. That's good news. That really is good. I'm excited, you know, um, because especially... We, we, interesting, the, um, who was it, David, who answered now from Zimbabwe? Yes. Uh, we had some, 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 some Zimbabwe guys on our course uh, we, last week. We, uh, we have a very intensive fish farming course, which is more about the fish than the aquaponics. And... Um, he is very excited to take it back to Zimbabwe and 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 increase the the aquaponic side. Wow! No, that's that's great. You know, because I feel like as young people as well, you know, a lot of us are looking at ways to become more efficient, to become more tech savvy, and we wanna you know be a part of the you know environmental footprint, and we want um, flexibility more than anything. Mm -hmm. So we are excited. It's just. Because it's not so popular, it's not in our face as much as traditional crop farming and um, livestock farming is. So we, we're not hearing more of it. So I'm happy that you guys are here so that we can have these conversations and really just, yeah. you know. Most, most, most certainly, you know, you know just, just the, the, the footprint that aquaponics uses is so tiny. Um, I mean, I don't even have a hectare, and I, I do 160,000 plants. Wow. Uh, yeah, 160,000 plants in, in six tunnels, which is un, I mean, of. It's not yeah. possible on, on traditional farming, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and they grow, and they grow. At this stage, at this time of the year, I actually give away because I grow, grow faster than what I can that's, sell. That's, uh, actually, we need to get into that Um because you guys have a system that works and that's producing, you know, endlessly. How do you deal with that? So we'll actually talk about this more. Um, I think we should actually start our session now. It's almost six o'clock. Mm -hmm. To those of you who are joining us, my name is Gukuletu Matlamu. I'm going to be your host today, tonight rather. Um, today is a topic that is very interesting. It's aquaponics, it's fish farming, and it's not popular. So... Now we are going to talk about how can it be popular because it is such a lucrative business. It's a business that can really transform your ROIs. So we have our speakers here. 
they're going to introduce themselves shortly and let the show begin. So let's start with you, my aquaponics. Please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Tell us what you do. Hi, thanks, Guglieta. Um, my name is Henry Pereira. I'm the co-founder of my aquaponics. But I'm actually representing the Cradle Aquaponics here because we did a joint venture with Valverde Eco Hotel. Um, and um, yeah, so we built the system, we run the system for them, and uh, they buy the produce, some of the produce for their restaurant. Thank you so much, my aquaponics. Uh, sweet and short, we love that. Neil, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do and what you're about. I'm Neil. Um, I own Urban Aquaponics, which is a commercial entity. We use trout as our as our primary fish, or well, not our primary fish, our fish of choice, um, which is a slightly difficult fish to keep, more 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 difficult than, than tilapia or catfish. Um, and I'm also the the Chairman of the Aquaponics Association of Southern Africa. It's not South Africa. It's Southern Africa, which includes everybody around us, around South Africa. Um, I think that's the, the main things. Maybe a question or two that, that could come up later is specifically Southern Africa, the African Union, and the influ influence that South Africa has on 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 the permitting um specifically to certain fish species like like nilotikus and so on thank you so much neil um davido i think is having network issues so we're just going to proceed my aquaponics tell us what is aquaponics and how did you start this journey um you spoke briefly earlier that you started 10 years ago. Tell us how you transi transitioned into starting it, um, I, I'm assuming, small scale to where you are right now. Hi, good day, Jay. Yes, um, so I started, um, no, we started my aquaponics back in 2010, I think it was December 2010, uh, mainly as a, as a hobby in, initially, and uh, that then... Um, uh, that then went on to becoming a business, uh, my aquaponics, where we sell aquaponic equipment. Um, we give courses as well, training courses. Um, so aquaponics is basically what the name implies. Aqua comes from aquaculture, which is fish farming. And ponics comes from hydroponics, which is uh, growing plants in water. So the combination of the two. They are basically three living uh, organisms or uh, in, in an aquaponic system, there's the fish, uh, there is plants, and of course, uh, the beneficial bacteria that a lot of people tend to forget about. Without the beneficial bacteria, you don't have an aquaponics system. Um, so basically, um, the fish create ammonia through feces and urine, and that, um, or uh, the uneaten food of the fish also gets converted to ammonia. The ammonia then gets converted to nitrites and then nitrates by different beneficial bacteria. And nitrates is what the plants need to, to grow. So some people under the perception that the fish poop is actually what the plants up, uh, take up, but it's not. Um, there is a uh, bacterial um, act activity that converts the ammonia into nitrates for the plants to, to eat. So is the system, is aquaponics more organic, would you say, Neil? Unfortunately, I, I just, well, say they're my aquaponics. I don't think anybody could, could explain it easier. Um, um, we, we are challenged that we can't classify ourselves as organic because the definition of organics is in pure soil. So we are not, we're not organic. We call ourselves more than organic because we don't use soil and so on. Um, even even um, the Aquaponic Association of America has now joined up into one association within Europe and even now fighting the, the terminology organic. So we are actually more than organic. So then um, because it's, it, you can't classify it as organic, you can't classify it as a, a soil-growing um, 
enterprise what do you guys mark how do you guys market yourselves and how can you best um get the benefits of selling an aquaponics produce um my aquaponics i think you can take that one yeah we've never really had an issue selling the the, the, the products um into the restaurant business and um yeah, many of the restaurant business and hotel business, um, they will, they, they'll take it. It's a, it's a clean product. Um, yeah, in America, it's more controlled, of course. Uh, they need to go through a certain process, which Neil can maybe elaborate on. Um, I was under the impression, in fact, that in America, uh, aquaponics um, had been uh, passed to, to pass as organic. Um, you know, I'm, <laughs> when people talk about organic, and as Neil says, in South Africa, you're only allowed to call your product organic if it's grown in soil, which uh, I, I personally don't agree with. But uh, I, I assume it's all a money-making, um, a money-making issue. But yes, we've never had an issue. Uh, we've sold to the likes of um, uh, what they call themselves, Mug and Bean, um, other five-star hotels around uh, Lance area, and we've never had issues. Okay, so um, thank you so much, my aquaponics, for that. Neil, please let's speak more about the certification here in South Africa. So I want to start an aquaponics farm, right? Are there any certifications that I need? And um, how does that work for me to be a certified aquaponics farmer? Thank you. Yes, um, I mean, the starting point, is you need permits for your fish in the south or nowadays southern Africa. You need permits for the fish. You need import permits. If you're bringing them from a different province, you need what they call an import permit. You need then need a holding permit, and it depends on the species. So the 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 fish are permitted, not your plants. So you need to have a permit. You need to say you using a different uh, a, a species of fish. For instance, let's start with the with the tilapia. You can get a Mozambicus, which is a a a South African fish or a fish of um, which is reasonably easy to get. Then when you go to the Niloticus, which is comes from the Nile River, it's a fast growing fish. Um, that's more difficult. Unfortunately, um, that's now been declared as alien and invasive species. And then if you use trout like I do, um, you need a permit. And that was declared alien and invasive in, in October last year, and that was lifted in February this year. So the bottom line is the aquaponic or the ponic side, no permitting needed, but the aqua portion, we have one little challenge where the departments in South Africa have changed, where it used to be Department of Agriculture, Forestries and Fisheries, which then became the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environmental Affairs, which we are a, a, um, a, a part of. Um, unfortunately, we should have moved with agriculture instead of with forestries and fisheries, because fisheries actually means a natural resource out of the sea. We should have rather remained we've gone with agriculture, which is now agriculture and land reform. So there are a few challenges which which we are in discussions with the part with the, the departments um, with to ensure that we um, uh, possibly move or or the the permitting then becomes a a, a easier easier concept for us. Um, as far as the the organics goes, um, the Americans are, are still. I had a discussion with them this morning. They they are on the edge where uh, it will become easier, and then the world will follow. But we in South Africa we can't classify ourselves as organic. But that doesn't mean that our people, the, the, the clients don't buy from us because they understand. So it's not the certification or the fancy badge or any of that. Um, uh, the hotels and the restaurants and the market and the pick and pays and all those guys do buy, buy from us, but we can't 
formally classify ourselves as organic. Thank you so much, Neil, for that. So I guess if I wanted to start um, an aquaponics enterprise, really all I need to be stressing about is the, the fish aspect and making sure that I am in compliance with that. My aquaponics, tell us about um, the source of fish that you use. Does that matter? Because, I mean, we are inland. So where do you even get your fish? And how do you determine which fish to use? You can basically use any fish. In fact, you can use any animal that lives in the water that can create that creates ammonia. It's as easy as that. We focus mainly on tilapia. We stick to the Mozambique's tilapia uh, and also the tilapia rendali, which is the red-breasted uh, tilapia. Uh, for me, that's probably the best fish for aquaponics because um, uh, the red-breasted tilapia uh, will eat greens. So any offcuts of your lettuce or other greens, you can feed back to the fish, uh, thereby saving on uh, feed costs, which can, you know, commercial feed, fish feed becomes quite expensive. So um, the, only, the only challenge, of course, that we have with, with the Rendali is that they like a subtropical type of fish, as, as most tilapia are. And uh, if the water dips below 20 degrees centigrade, um, then they tend to start eating less, going into hibernation. And at about 12 degrees to 9 degrees centigrade, they start dying. So that's our main challenge, uh, specifically in winter. And then what we have to do uh, in our setup, our commercial setup, is obviously to supplement more um, because, you know, we're not getting enough from the fish. So you either have to heat up the water at extra cost, which has an impact on your the cost of your produce. Um, and heating is also a challenge because, you know, we've tried solar, we've tried um, uh, heating with gas. We've now got pool blankets on our on our system and we are in a greenhouse. So um, still, you know, in winter on cold days, uh, our temperature drops down to about 14, 15 degrees. So that is the big, biggest challenge for aquaponics and I guess too for, for aquaculture, which is fish farming. Um, my aquaponics, why I have you here? I just really want to understand the sp- fish farming as an end product. So you, you grow fish and then you sell the fish and then you grow your crops as well because it's a two system, right? And with your crops as well, isn't it limited to like water heavy crops like your leafy greens, your lettuce? So you sell that and you also sell your fish. So please tell us more about your markets then because it's fish and you get your 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 leafy greens. Who do you sell that to? Okay, so that's basically a, a bit of a fallacy. Um, you know, you, you require a relatively small amount of fish to grow a lot of vegetables. So if you're going to go in, into aquaponics, um, the idea is not to sell your fish because you're not going to make much money out of it. You know, um, to give you an example, you probably need two tanks uh, in, a, in a 30 by 10 meter tunnel where you can do about 4,000 to 5,000 plants, depending on what type of system you have, system design you have. Is it deep water culture? Is it uh, drip irrigation? Media beds? You can NFT, doesn't matter what. Um, so in a 30 by 10 meter tunnel, uh, you could basically drive all those plants with um, uh, two 20,000 liter tanks. Uh, and the rule of thumb in aquaponics is that you would, keep about 25 to 30 kilograms of fish per thousand liters. So if you do the maths, you know, uh, 20,000 20, liters, uh, 20 times 30 is uh, what, 600 kilos of fish every eight to 12 months if you're lucky. It's just not viable to use aquaponics as a fish producing um, uh, farm. It's, if you're going to aquaponics, it's got to be focused on plants. To answer your other question, uh, yes, uh, most people do the cash crops like your lettuce, your spinach, but you can do um, tomatoes. We've grown tomatoes very successfully. Um, Cucumbers as well. Um, Chilies. uh, You can basically grow anything with the exception, of course, of things like carrots and um, root-type plants, carrots, potatoes, that sort of thing. 
yeah okay no well, i'm glad to know that actually the market is there and you can grow like a lot because a lot of uh, aquaponics farmers are growing greens i don't know if it's it's a market issue or if that's just what grows better so if we if you're saying that we can grow a different type and variety of vegetables then that's great um neil let's come to you and speak about the challenges of aquaponics and i think you'd know this better because we are living in south africa you know electricity is running the entire system because aquaponics is a system so we need electricity we can't really depend on escom so let's speak more about the challenges and how we mitigate that okay if i may just add on what my aquaponics said is you must make a decision are you going to be a fish farmer or an aquaponics farmer if you want to be a fish farmer be a fish farmer because your 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 plan or your finances really comes out of the plants not out of the fish so i find that a lot of times where people want to say but how much can i create out of the fish the fish are there um and and in two south african words it's mahala nutrients your your nutrients are for free and that's why the fish are there they must hopefully pay for their own fish feed and further than that they are there to create the nutrients for you mm-hmm. challenge challenge is it that we have um is is really about number one is market is to sell your produce at large scale um there are few markets and that is that is for instance um the fresh produce markets prices are lower not determined so you deliver your product and you get what you get secondly you can have the niche markets and those are the spas and the pick and pays and so on that is a reasonable challenge or become a challenge um from about september last year where you need global gap to be able to sell to those those um markets they're not allowed to buy from you unless you are global gap certified which is a little bit of a challenge now so um that i'm sure will be overcome soon to sell your produce is really your your income so without without the global gap you will not sell massive volumes unless you're selling to the traditional fresh produce markets where your price is slightly lower okay so um what about the challenges um regarding the system of aquaponics and neil because we know that the system runs itself and it needs water right it needs cuz you need to keep your fish and it also needs um electricity so i really want to yeah, yeah, yes. so i really want to speak about those challenges and maybe other challenges that we're not aware of and i know that electricity okay. is the most pressing yes it is it is not that pressing of late uh, we've done a lot of research and work on uh, on what they call a pure, pure sine wave pump so it's pumps that that could run off the solar and so on so electricity is 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 a challenge but uh, low wattage pumps which then give you the same same amount of um, water that that flows so electricity is is a challenge because but um, you know the bottom line depending on the fish species that you use tilapia uses much less dissolved oxygen than for instance the trout and if you go to catfish i mean they air breather so you you have a little bit of oxygen in your in in your system so they don't they in theory they don't use any any um any oxygen because of the air breather that they are so we have we, we have those on the on the electricity point we have a challenge or two but there are many positives and the 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 largest positive really is the quantity and the quality of produce that you can produce for instance you can produce 24 plants and uh, now speaking about leafy greens in a square meter if you go to the tomatoes and stuff it's a, it's a little bit different and you need high nutrient levels for them but you can produce um and traditional farming and that's where i come from as well traditional farming 
you can plant 17 to 20,000 plants per hectare because you need space for the tractor to drive and all of that type of thing. Whereas in aquaponics, on the same hectare, you can do 200,000 plants. As a matter of fact, yeah, yeah, we do a little bit more if I had a hectare. Um, we, we, at this stage, we're on, on two-thirds of a hectare. Our challenges lie with uh -huh. an education process But in the backyard was to create a system um, which I call a, an ecosystem in which one thing feeds into the other. So for me, having tilapia or fish in a very small pond, I call it very small, it's a uh, two meters by five and two meters by seven. Though I overstocked fish, my only challenge is water reticulation. So in that space, I had to stock 400 fingerlings of fish and there is also less growth because of the space but that's where i learn that's where i i do my feeding trials and also i also use the fish the water from the fish to irrigate seedlings and also use it in the garden because it's got fish pool which is very rich in ammonia so that's why i had to put a fish pond um in my backyard so how's that going, Davizio? Please tell us about your experience. Tell us about what you've learned in um, a scalable space as your backyard. Um, I would want to say that the experience has been good because it, it's always a learning experience, a learning curve. Um, like, for example, when you overstock, you're supposed to manage the water almost every day. Like uh, what Neil was saying, you need to look at your water every day. Either you look at it in the morning, you look at it in the afternoon, you look at it in the evening. Because what you are trying to manage are the oxygen levels which are in the water. Because with the higher stocking density, it also means the higher the demand of oxygen. But it's been very, very good um, that I'm learning in a small space so that when it comes to expansion, I would have... Uh, got, I mean, the requisite experience in fish farming. Thank you so much, Davido. And you're doing so well, guys. Um, check out Davido. He's really doing very well in his um, uh, tilapia farming enterprise. My aquaponics, let's get to the good news. Um, let's scale aquaponics now. You know, if somebody really wanted to get into aquaponics, let's scale it to lift, obviously, a hectare, you know, of arable land compared to an aquaponics operation. What are the gains? Sorry, what? What? I, I, I didn't hear the last uh, part. What? what yeah, gains? the gains. Yeah, look, I, I, I always tell people to start as small as possible, get to know the system, understand the science and how it all works before escalating to something bigger. Um, you know, in South Africa, the norm is to, in in hydroponics, for example, the norm is to, to run a thirty by ten, which is a three hundred square meter tunnel. And of course, you can have multiple of these tunnels and you can sort of uh, escalate accordingly. Um, so um, we have a design um, that would be one tunnel. 10% or 10, between 10 and 20% would be for the fish uh, and then the rest for the plants. And uh, like I said, you can have different types of system designs. You can have a deep water culture where you have floating rafts. Um, that lends itself more to 
to your lettuces and your leafy greens. And then you have um, your media beds, which I prefer, which is beds filled with grow media. Uh, that grow media could be something like stone or lecker. And in places like uh, Namibia, they actually use charcoal. Um, so that would be a totally inert media where you'd put the plants in. Uh, and then you've got your NFT systems, which is like pipe systems with holes, and you put your plants in these holes. So depending on the type of system and how you uh, design it, you could fit more or less. Uh, but on average, between four and 5,000 plants in 80% of a 30 by 10 meter tunnel. So yeah, we, I haven't really competed with guys that are doing traditionally in hectares. But as Neil says, you get you get more yield per square meter uh, and better quality um, in aquaponics than you would do in uh, growing in soil, for example, out in the fields. Um, so what you have to do is you've got to focus on products that are going to give you the best return per square meter. You know, so lettuce, you've got 25, maybe 30 lettuce per square meter. Uh, you know, what can you get per, per lettuce at the market, you know, compared to using that same square meter to say, uh, growing pak choy, we, uh, pak choy is the, like a Chinese type cabbage, um, grows just as fast as lettuce, but you can get two to three times the price of that, uh, of lettuce. The thing is to find the market for that, you know, so you have to go off to your Asian markets and that sort of thing. So I always tell uh, our students that come on our courses, to focus on value add uh, or high, high, um, high price products uh, in their markets um, because you are restricted um, based on the square meters that you have available. Thank you so much, my aquaponics. And tell us more about um, your service training. Like, what can one look forward to? How, what do you guys teach and how does your uh, curriculum look like? Thanks. Um, yeah, so we, we don't offer like these two, three day courses. We offer a day course at our premises in, in Lancero. When I say our premises, uh, we do a JV with Valverde Eco Hotel. Uh, the owners of Valverde Eco Hotel are environmentally friendly people. You know, they, they heat water up uh, with solar and they recycle their water. So the JV of aquaponics um, went uh, hand in hand with that. Um, Sorry, I forgot your question. It's okay. No, I was just asking, um, how, how does one um, join you? So you do a day program at your farm where you teach um, people who are interested in aquaponics how the system works, and you can fit that in a day. Yeah, so we, we, we start uh, off with the basics um, of aquaponics, you know, explaining the science, how the beneficial bacteria work, um, what are quality issues that they have to look after, how to measure, what the parameters should be. Um, we then move on to uh, system design, uh, system sizing, how many fish you can have, uh, um, how many plants you can have per uh, amount of, of um, fish um, biomass. Um, and then we start touching on the individual things, the beneficial bacteria. Um, what are they like in terms of temperature and DO, dissolved oxygen, the same for the fish, different types of fish that you can use, um, uh, as well as the plants itself, you know, uh, the plant cycle, how you plan uh, from seedling stage to, uh, sorry, from, from germination stage to seedling stage to harvest, uh, you know, how you have to plan for that. And of course, then a little bit to the financials of running an operation like that. You know, what are your input costs, uh, maintenance, uh, labor, uh, and then what are your revenue potential, you know, um, selling selling the um, plants, um, maybe some value add. You could grow chilies and bottle them, um, basil. You could uh, make pesto sauce uh, so you get a slightly more money out of, out of the product and you, and you got a longer shelf life. So, yeah, we touch on, on everything from the basics up until um, selling a product and running, running a system. Sounds interesting. Sounds great, actually. So 
anyone who wants to learn aquaponics system, it is possible here in South Africa. You should contact my aquaponics for that one. Neil, let's speak about the numbers. Let's speak about the costs involved to start aquaponics because I, I can imagine that it is a system that is highly efficient, meaning it costs a lot of money. Let's speak about the costs involved and the profits. Okay, to build a system, there's a, I like to call it a fallacy, that it costs much more to build an aquaponic system than a traditional farm. And you always have to do those equations. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the only equation we have is one hectare to try and get to some type of equation. So, yes, it does cost you money to build an aquaponics farm. Um, but if you take on the on the opposite side compared to a, let's call it traditional farming, you'd need a tractor and a plow. Now, even if you buy a second-hand tractor, a second-hand plow, um, um, and so on, and then you need a watering system, which might cost you X, Y, Z. And if you're looking at a hectare, it will cost you approximately 20% more on an aquaponics setup than what it would cost you on a on a traditional farm. Now, if I say 20% more, that's your initial layout. When you get to your production cycle, it costs you much less because now you don't need the diesels. You don't need um, to spray your plants. Or, I mean, you don't need to, to, to water your plants with um, major pumps. Our water usage is, as specified on every system, I've got 563,000 liters. That's more than a million liters of water in my system. I use a maximum of 10,000 liters a month measured. My system is, measured, we measure everything. So immediately, your cost comes down on a month. You don't have to do weeding. You don't need labor to weed between your, your on, uh, as you have to do in traditional farming. If you have weed or weeds in your, in your uh, aquaponic system, then you are growing weed. You're not growing um, leafy greens or tomatoes or cucumbers or any of that. So the cost to build, yes, most certainly, is approximately 20% more on a hectare. Um, than what it is on, on traditional farming. Depends on the quality that you're going to build your system at. So cost-wise, that's the point. Secondly, your income. Because you are planting 20 times the, uh, um, sorry, 100 times more plants than what you're planting um, in traditional farming, your income revenue is exactly that. So you have the possibility of bringing in much more revenue on the same space of ground. So if you equate that 20 times more, but 100 times more plants, um, the, uh, okay. the economics works out. So basically it is profitable. <laughs> it's profitable, guys. Um, you know, it might start off, as uh, as Neil was explaining, uh, a high costly system to build but once you get the show higher, on the road higher higher higher, higher. Sorry, higher. Sorry, no. you know once you get the, the show on the road that is when you really see the benefits so you kind of need to you know spend money to get money that's the that's the bottom line david so let's speak about the production then um you know how much does it cost? What are we looking at? You know, also with the with the fish, don't the fish tanks need to be taken care of and cleaned? And then you you looking at your your small inputs, maybe your seedlings. But like, tell us about the production costs that you in your experience, Davido. Um. So in my experience, um, the production costs of uh, of doing well i think i need to explain to people that what i run is not really an aquaponic system i call it quasi aquaponics because i'm trying to mimic um, 
what they do in aquaponics. But for my media, I use vermicompost. Um, that's the media which I use. And I manually take water from the fish pond into um, the PVC pipe where I grow my plants. So I think the cost um, which is involved, one, for the fish pond, for the fish um, in Zimbabwe currently, um, it costs 40 US dollars for you to get a thousand fingerlings. So if you are going to be using something for my system, I use $20 USD for, for, for 500 fingerlings. Then for the feed, I, I use commercial feed plus supplement um, feed. So for the commercial feed, I used almost um, 90 US dollars for commercial which this And this is for covering nine months. So that's 90, that's 20, that's 110. And then for digging up um, and the plastic, it costed around $60, which goes to 170. So with less than 200, so with, with, with at least at most, um, one can use $200 to be able to have 400 fingerlings feed them from from one month from baby fish until they are up for for the market or until they are they, they've matured for, for 200 US dollars and also they are able to have at least 15 um, plants because because of the length of the small fish pond the PVC pipe can only accommodate 15 plants which are which is lettuce so with less than 200 dollars they are able to have 400 fish and they have 15 plants rotating after every 35 days of growing lettuce. Thank you so much, Davido. And would you say that um, with, in your experience, can you DIY and replicate an aquaponics system instead of like getting a professional to come and install it for you? Um, I think you can if you're going to do it manual, but when, when there is need for you to get pumps and get um, the water, because with aquaponics, what I understand is you actually need someone to be able to tell you how the water is going to be moved. The piping, solid the piping, um, and also the water tank which you are going to getting fish and how you are going to measure the ammonia, how you are going to measure the oxygen. You definitely need a professional to do that for you because you might want to DIY for yourself, but you might, you might end up eating the brick wall. Thank you so much, Tavizo, for... for informing us and letting us know that actually we need to do this and do it right the first time. Um, my aquaponics, tell us about your experience, you know, um, what has been your ups and what has been your downs? Um, yeah, so the ups, you know, there's always, it's very rewarding to see your own, uh, what, what you've planted grow. Um, and, you know, obviously also try and make some money out of it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of challenges and we, we, ne we never hide uh, the problems that we've had. Uh, I mean, at one stage, um, we, um, I got a call in the morning from my farm assistant and he told me that all my fish were dead. So I rushed to the farm, got there and like 80% of my fish were belly up. So now I'm trying to work out what could have caused this. And, uh, you know, I questioned him and I asked him, what did you do? Did you change the water? Did you put new water in? Uh, you know, what, what did you do? He said, no, nothing. He didn't do anything other than the normal. And eventually we got to the bottom of it. So we um, get in uh, seedlings from uh, a big grower. Um, and we usually get these seedlings on a Tuesday. Uh, and then we leave it for five days. We just water, wash it off, water it for five days to get rid of, of the um, pesticides that they spray it with. And this particular week, um, our farm assistant was in a hurry and he got the stuff on Monday instead of a Tuesday. And he thought he could transplant these seedlings to our system on the Wednesday. And of course, they still had a bit of the pesticides and just a little bit of their pesticide basically wiped out all our fish so when that happens you know <laughs> you basically have to start um, from scratch again and um, so that's that's something that can happen the other thing is um, uh, pests you know aphids if the plant's immune system is not strong enough or if you've got a specific uh, variety that is that uh, is, doesn't have a good immune system these aphids come in after 
five to six weeks and they basically take out your plants. So you've got to watch your plants all the time, make sure they're healthy from the beginning. Um, so yeah, it, it's you know, aquaponics, like any farming, uh, is not for sissies, as they say. And you have to know your stuff and you have to pay attention, take your measurements every day, um, your pH, your nitrite, your nitrates, uh, dissolved oxygen in some cases, um, and just make sure that everything is going the way it should be. Because if you miss a beat, you could lose everything. Sure, yeah, no. Thanks for that reality check, uh, Michael Panis. I'm sure it wasn't easy. But that's the beauty of it, is that you you are able to bounce back almost immediately, you know, after something like that. Um, I actually also wanted to ask you, with regards to the hydroponic side of uh, the operation, how does that work? You, you know, do you guys also use the same growth mediums, like uh, Koya and... Um, all those growth mediums hydroponics use, or do you use like pebbles? Because most of the time I see aquaponics uh, farmers using pebbles. Is that like a thing? Yeah, so the pebbles that you mentioned, um, we refer to as LECA, L-E-C-A, which is, stands for Lightweight Expandable Clay Aggregate. So what they basically do, um, they get... Um, uh, what do you call it, um, not uh, clay, and they put it in a kiln at 1,500 degrees centigrade, and it sort of pops up uh, into like a little ball, uh, and inside you've got all these little holes. So those pebbles, as you call it, uh, can be used in media beds. Uh, it, it's easier on your fingers when you're planting the, uh, the plants, uh, the seedlings, or transplanting them. But they can also be used as uh, biofilter media because the beneficial bacteria can uh, establish themselves inside these little holes in the media. So yeah, um, the lecker is very popular in aquaponics. And if you go and do research on aquaponics on YouTube, you know, the Americans started with it and they, everybody tends to go with that. Um, All right. No, thank you. Thank you for the correction, uh, my aquaponics. Davido, let's come to you with regards to pest control. So how do you how do you deal with that in your farm? Do you use do you spray or do you have other organic tricks? Um how can I say this? But I would want to say so far so good. <laughs> I have never had to deal with any pest. Uh, maybe it's due to my to my location where I'm located, like I'm doing it. In town it's um it's uh in the backyard so you you find that if they are pests mostly they are in where people are farming or they are in what I call it um in farms besides this is this is an urban area so you find there are less pests here because they don't have um way to feed or way to hibernate when it's off season. Well, you're so lucky, Davido. But thank you for your honesty. I'm going to ask you guys uh one last question. And then I'm going to open up the floor to the listeners. So listeners, if there is a question that you feel like I have not asked yet, or if there is a question or comment that you'd like to add, please feel free to request to become a speaker so that you can voice out your questions directly to our speakers. Neil, um, are you here? Neil, hello. All right, it's, he's probably experiencing some network difficulties. Um, my aquaponics, my very last question to you is, how do you deal with the food waste? Because it's something that we actually spoke about, you know, because here's this perfect system running on its own, you know. It's, it's there to make sure that food is produced 24-7. So how do you deal, especially with the COVID, you know, and things closing down? Like, what do you do with the, the food that you get and you, and you can't supply it to the markets? Yeah, good question. So normally, in, in normal circumstances, uh, the beauty about an aquaponic system is that all the waste you can sort of reuse back into a system. Or uh, I'll give you an example. So all the uneaten fish food and the, and, and the, food and, and the fish feces, um, which is ammonia rich, what we do with that, we put into a mineralizer tank. Into the mineralizer tank, we pump air. 
that air gets the atrotrophic bacteria to to start uh, doing their job, which is to decompose all those solids into uh, minerals and nutrients, which you put back into the system. So over time, all those solids get converted back into nutrients that gets put back into the system. As far as plants go, you know, um, if you've got tilapia rendali uh, and you've got extra lettuce, you can lettuce or, or spinach, you can feed that back to your to your fish. Um, alternatively, you've got to create a compost heap um, with worms, and uh, the worms then get fed back to the fish. So it becomes like a cyclical type of thing. Now, with COVID, yes, that was uh, obviously caught everybody unawares. Uh, so you've got usually more produce uh, than you can, that you can supply uh, and less buyers. And, uh, of course, then you have to plan accordingly. And um, when you've got excess product, you either have to give it away to charity like we have before. Um, alternatively, the pig farmer next door. Thank you. So it's it's a circle of life, basically. Thank you so much, Marco Panix. Um, Neil, are you are you are you back with us? Neil. Okay. Um. Davizo. Yes. Sorry, was my mic muted? I asked how. Yes. Did you hear me? No, I think your mic was muted. Okay, sorry about that. No, I was basically asking um, your challenges, or you know, on the scale that you are operating in. Let's say I wanted to, you know, really shadow you. What um, challenges am I going to? encounter and how can i just nip that in the bud all right thank you very much um i think the major challenge if someone is going to do the quasi aquaponic system number one is you're supposed to have your own compost so that you can actually um i would want to say from the food waste because you find out that at my house or at three houses um i collect waste or they bring waste to my house because I've got a vermi compost, I've got worms, which eat up the, um, the extra food, or which de degrade the food, so that it becomes the medium for the growth of um, the lettuce. So for one to be able to do it, first they need the compost. Secondly, you need a reliable water source, because sometimes, um, and by the way, I, I, I use tap water, like the normal water which comes from the tap. That's what the one I use for, for fish farming. So you, uh, because of, the second density, you are supposed to have a reliable water because um, you find out that in one day or in two days or in three days, you are supposed to change the water because it would have amassed too much ammonia and it will also be too greenish or we call it algal bloom because of the nutrients. So you're supposed to have um, a reliable source of water. So one of the challenges is that sometimes you don't have any water coming out um, it means sometimes your fish as well are going to suffer from from lack of oxygen, especially in the morning because of uh, the high number of alg algal cells they are going to deplete the oxygen in the pond. Yeah. Thank you so much. So it's basically water and uh, the compost that I need to have. Yeah, it's right. water and compost. Thank you so much, Davidzo, for that one. Um, Neil, are you there testing one? All right. Whilst we, um, Neil, I think he has internet connection problems. So is there anyone who'd like to ask a question to our speakers? Um, now's your chance to. Don't be shy. This really is a safe space. You can ask away anything that you feel like um, I haven't covered. So how it works is that you can 
request to be a speaker and then I'll accept and then you can just speak. So the floor is open, guys. I'll open it for 10 minutes and then it will come to a close. So just request to be a speaker and then I'll accept and then you can ask your question. What I really wanted to ask you guys is, um, actually what I wanted to ask Neil, um, but I think you guys can also take this because it really applies to any aquaponic farmer. How do you deal with people coming up and saying that fish farming slash aquaponics is, is bad? You know, here are fish being raised in unnatural diets and small enclosures. Like, what do you guys have to say about that? And what is your input when it comes to um, that ethical issue? Speakers, anyone can take this. Davizo, my aquaponics, what are your thoughts? Um, I wanted to take it, but I think I'll let my aquaponics start and then I may, I may add to what I think. Though I'm not an, aqua, an aquaponics farmer, I'm a fish farmer um, who's doing it in a pond. So maybe uh, there's, there's a difference in it. My aquaponics? Yeah, um, I don't quite understand uh, the question. Uh, can you just repeat it again, please? Um. So I'm asking, what are your thoughts or opinions on people saying that aquaponics, aquaculture, fish farming is unethical? Because, you know, fish are grown in these small enclosures, you know, and they are fed unnatural diets, etc., etc. You know, as a, a farmer, what are your views on that? Yeah, look, <laughs> there's always the the haters and the whatever else you want to call them. I mean, that that, that doesn't <laughs> it doesn't only apply to um, it doesn't only apply to fish farming. Um, look, as I say, aquaponics is more for for growing vegetables and not so much the fish. Although we use the fish to create the nutrients for the plants. Uh, yes, with fish farming, uh, there are people that say, you know, it's in your main and, and it's not really. Uh, because, I mean, if you look at other types of livestock farming, for example, chickens, and uh, there's a big push for free-ranging chickens, for example. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's, I don't know where I stand on that, but I, I don't believe it's, it's uh, in your main to grow fish in captivity in a recirculating system they get a good diet a good balanced diet um, enough dissolved oxygen clean water so i don't know what else fish want thank you my aquaponics for that one davido what are your um inputs there um i would want to compare fish farming just the same with brailler farming we are just doing one and the same thing um so I believe as, 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 as long as you're respecting what we call the five freedoms of animals, the freedom of movement, the freedom of food, the freedom of not being to fear, freedom to express um, natural, those five freedoms, you are not doing any harm to the fish. Thank you so much, guys, for that one. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, farmers do get these ethical questions. It's, it's normal because people want to know where their food comes from, how the, the cattle were raised, the chickens were raised. So you guys also have fish. So that's why I thought this is a very appropriate question. So thank you so much for speaking your truth. Um, so listeners, do you guys have a question? I'm not seeing questions today. Um, but I did get uh, a question on my DM. Uh, my aquaponics, a guy wanted to know how much a 30 by 10 um, would cost him to set up. Okay, so uh, we have a video on our YouTube channel um, with a, a full explanation on a, a 3D model of a 30 by 10. And now I envisage, envisage that to be. Now, a 30 by 10 um, with two fish tanks of 20,000 liters each uh, with some grow beds, uh, deep water culture beds and combination deep water culture beds and uh, media grow beds. Um, again, it depends how you build these beds. You know, if you're going to use fiberglass beds, they're going to be more expensive. 
then beds that have been made out of brick, maybe brick and mortar, or even beds that have been made out of wood frames or steel frames with PVC liners. So <laughs> the cost can vary, but using fiberglass grow beds, um, which are pretty expensive, but also reduces the labor cost because they're easy to install. Um, on the 30 by 10, you could look at anything from uh, 300,000 Rand to 450,000 Rand, um, depending on your labor costs and what materials you're going to use in your system design. So I think maybe we can just also um, end it there, uh, my aquaponics. Please tell us how can people reach you and tell us more about your training program as well. Where can people reach you as well? Um, thanks, uh, good later. Uh, yeah, so we have a website, www.myaquaponics.co.za. We've got a YouTube channel under My Aquaponics. Uh, we've got some videos in there. Um, We've, we've uh, actually filmed, uh, putting together a very small system for under 25,000 Rand um, using uh, w wood frames and PVC, um, recycled PVC sheets. Uh, so you can go into our YouTube channel as well. And also on our website, there's a blog section where I've writ we've written some articles around other people that have set up systems um, and a whole lot of uh, interesting articles on the subject. Thanks. Thank you so much, my Copanex. Davido, you know, I want to shadow you. I want to learn more from you because I also want to start, um, you know, where you're starting. How can one uh, reach you and get a hold of you? Um, so for people to reach me, uh, they can either DM me. My DM is very open here on Twitter. Um, and also my email, um, it's Davido at kvd consultancy dot c o dot z w because um, I also double as a consultant so to people who want to start fish farming fish farming not aquaponics fish farming um I'm your guy to be able so sometimes I help people find and be able to help people with doing the setups. Thank you so much Davido for that. Um Neil, are you still with us? Shoo, guys, I think Neil has terrible, terrible network where he is. So I don't see any questions on the floor, so I take it, speakers, you guys did an amazing, amazing job. Um, so I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone. Okay, there is a question. This always happens when we're about to close, people you know, <laughs> start... Coming up, Vegethentic, how are you? Vegethentic, are you there? Sure, Vegethentic, we cannot hear you if you are speaking. We can't hear a thing. Vegethentic is actually a hydroponic farmer, so I'm sure he has a very interesting question. Maybe they must just unmute their mic, maybe. It's unmuted. Of course, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you're can you yes, we can hear you. Uh, that my, my, my mic was on mute. Uh, oh, your mic, okay. Yeah, 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 my mic. Uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, Google for such an informative. Uh, I'd like to thank the speakers as well for such an informative session. So my question is about plant nutrition. So I want to know, since we all know that... Uh, especially uh, uh, fruiting plants. They have like different uh, nutritional requirements at the different stages of growth. So how do you ensure that uh, the plants get proper nutrition at the different stages of growth, particularly the fruiting plants like your bell peppers and tomatoes? So how do you ensure that they get the proper uh, um uh, re, uh, the, the proper nutrition of the micronutrients, particularly your potassium and phosphorus, and they don't get uh, a lot of nitrogen. Since you've spoken about uh, ammonia, how do you ensure that they don't get uh, a lot of nitrogen when they do not need it, uh, especially when they are flowering or when they are fruiting? Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Virgil. Then take speakers, please fire it away. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. Um, so, uh, you know, that's the other fallacy on, on aquaponics. Uh, people tend to think that in aquaponics, uh, you know, you can just run your system on fish alone. Uh, so the fish and the ammonia will obviously create a lot of nitrogen in the water and some of the other trace minerals. But there will always be shortages in things like magnesium, um, uh, uh, calcium and potassium, and also iron. So, um, especially on the commercial system or slightly bigger systems, you have to start supplementing uh, with calcium and uh, potassium. We usually use uh, fish-friendly stuff, which is potassium or calcium hydroxide or potassium or calcium um, carbonate. Uh, and, of course, magnesium. You can use Epsom salts, which has about 10% magnesium. Uh, but, yes, at different types of the plant stage, like in the fruiting stage, we just tend to up uh, potassium, uh, especially with tomatoes. And, um, yeah, they tend to, to grow fine uh, on, on our side. Vijay um, are you satisfied with your answer? Yes, I'm satisfied. And I have one last question. Fire it away. Oh, uh, this last question is about the uh, seedlings. How do you uh, ensure that the seedlings have a lower concentration of uh, nutrients? Cause, uh, and how do you increase the con uh, concentration when the plants are growing? Uh, so this, we, we, uh, in our system, we don't really, we have grown some, some um, seedlings from, from seed stage uh, where we germinated. Um, but most of the time we get seedlings from, uh, our, from professional or commercial seed, seedling suppliers in South Africa, because it's a lot cheaper. I mean, we get seedlings, uh, from like 30 cents each, you know, um, which is a lot cheaper than growing it yourself. And in those situations, uh, you know, the plants are very healthy and we, we, we get it. Uh, we just have to watch out for that five day wait period before we transplant because of the pesticides that they spray on. It's got a five-day efficacy ratio. But otherwise, we don't do anything to the seedling. We basically wash off the peat on the roots and we transplant the clean roots into our media or uh, if it's um, NFT floating rafts, we put it straight into the um, net pots that are in the water. Thank you so much. Vegetensic. Are you All happy? right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. And I have one last, one last, last, last question. <laughs> no, it's fine. That's why this is, yeah, like, ask away. Yeah, I was late, so I, I'm not really sure if you've, uh, anyone has spoken about this or they've answered this already, but I'll just ask. Uh, uh, this one is about disease control, because uh, you, if I heard you speaking about, uh, fish dying because of pesticides so i wanted to know if you experience some diseases in the system particularly your uh because I, I i've read somewhere that fish are quite sensitive to herbicides uh no not herbicides uh the fungicides so i wanted to know if you have uh fungal diseases how do you go about treating them or do you have like any uh fungicides that are fish friendly by by uh, that are uh natural or something like that yeah yeah we, we've been lucky so we that's always stick to tilapia because uh, you know as neil said doing something like trout they're more susceptible to disease tilapia are very very hardy fish and provided that you keep the water clean um good clarity and uh, you know you look after the water you do your tests and good do levels um we've been lucky we've never never had any fungal breakouts with with our tilapia um so yeah uh, but yes if something like that does break out what i recommend to my customers is to immediately re remove the affected fish to increase the salt content um in the ponds to try and kill off any other bacteria but the problem with that is that you can have start affecting beneficial bacteria as well and the plants so it's a bit of a situation that you're in um 
so yeah, the, the, the most important thing to do in an aquaponic system is make sure that the water quality is always pristine. Thank you so much. Uh, Vegetensic, are you happy? I'm very happy. Thank you so much, my aquaponics. Thank okay, thank you so you are, much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, I think that was our only question that we have. If there's any other question, one more minute and then we'll close it. Um, I have a question for my aquaponics, seeing as you, you the last man standing. <laughs> are there opportunities, really, for us to get into the aquaponics world in South Africa? You know, is it, is it like waiting for young people to grab it with both hands? You know, like, what is the climate like? You know, because most of us are really focused on the traditional farming crops and, and livestock, you know. So how appealing really is it to be an aquaponics farmer? Can we join it? Is there a space for us? Is there a market for up-and-coming people in the aquaponic space? I agree. I'm assuming you're talking more in terms of commercial. Um, you know, our main market uh, is the home grower, uh, the D what you call the DIY or the backyard grower, and there we've seen tremendous growth, uh, where people, you know, want to grow the thing. Well, not organically, we say better than organic, um, and uh, they either go hydroponics or aquaponics, and uh, we've seen huge growth there, so I would recommend people, they want to get into aquaponics, to start small, do a little DIY system at the back, it's not it's not uh, very costly, you can use materials that like an IBC for very low cost. When you get a commercial, it starts becoming a bit riskier because like I said before you have to the biggest challenge in South Africa uh, is, is is keeping the water warm and there's a cost involved to that so if you could then compare commercial side aquaponics and hydroponics hydroponics is potentially cheaper to set up because you don't have to set up all these filters otherwise you don't have to have, you don't have to look after the fish um, so yeah, in an ideal world, uh, in a subtropical scenario, aquaponics is great. In South Africa, commercial, it becomes a lot riskier, and, and you have to do your homework. Thank you so much. But the market is there, right? Anyone can be an aquaponics farmer and really be successful in it. Yes, of course. Uh, anybody can be successful. Like anything else in farming, like you are in traditional farming, you know what it takes to, to su succeed. It's uh, hard work. So the same with aquaponics. So you've got to put the effort in. Uh, you've got to choose what product you're going to be selling uh, to for your market. Uh, get the most revenue out of that. And uh, make sure you make a profit out of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Guys. So you've heard it from our speakers first. Really, you need to do your homework. But this system does work. And um, as Neil explained, it does cost a lot of money, but the, the result is profitability and efficiency and continuous supply, which is really what we want if we're going to be saying that we are farmers focused on food security. So thank you so much, uh, my aquaponics. Thank you so much, Davizo. Um, I know network was a problem for you, but thank you so much for pulling through. Um, Neil, okay, you're a listener. I think you're having network problems, but thank you so much as well for being here. You guys taught us so much, and uh, you let us in your world when it comes to aquaponics. And we can see that it's, it's challenging, but it really, really looks attractive. So thank you so much, and I officially am saying good night. Thank you to our listeners, and we shall meet again Mondays and Thursdays. We continuously host these farm spaces every Mondays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Central African time, where we really talk about farming, what it takes, what it is, and the highs and the lows. So join us again. And if you miss our episodes, we have a YouTube page. So I will share everything after this session. So that is it for me. Thank you so much, speakers, once again. So good night, everybody.
Thank you, Gugaleto, and uh, wishing you all the luck with your amazing channel. It's uh, very, very good what you're doing, and uh, yeah, I, I'll be a follower from now on. <laughs> you're already on. Thank you so much. I followed back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, my Akapanis Davizo. Thank you so much. I appreciate no, you. you. No, you're welcome. It's good to talk about farming because some for some of us that's our life. So it's good to be talking about farming. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, guys, that is it. Good night. See you guys next week. Bye.